Hello and welcome back to another episode of War Tales. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the journey of a blind expert expert Iron Man run where we're trying to beat the game on the hardest difficulty with no previous knowledge. Last time we got our teeth kicked in here in the temple and we are going to go back to the temple very soon, next episode to be precise, to take revenge, but I figured we might want to do the Lisbeth Arena first because that could give us a crucial um, advantage, maybe a new weapon that we need. I did not sleep on the defeat. Uh, winners train, losers complain, as they say. And I trained uh, our characters to level 11. That's an important power breakpoint. Uh, we do have uh, the uh, Arcadian crafted armor available. And I crafted and perfected every single one of them. Best possible armor uh, that you can craft at this point. Uh, and substantially better than the stuff that I found so far. So. Our tank, for instance, is 80% guard. And just let that sink in with 625 armor. That means only 20% of uh, the damage comes through. Uh, this is an effective 3,500 armor class, um, plus the hit points afterwards, which is just phenomenal if you think about it. Did the same on the others. Um, fully upgraded new weapons. Switched around a couple of the oils. Nothing uh, big or fancy there. And then. Um, I ventured out and since Roby died I got ourselves a new Roby, Roby the second and we just so happened to get Roby the third as well. We will not permanently venture with two bears, not only do they eat too much but also I think they are a little bit overpowered. So we might want to uh, restrict ourselves to one of uh, these bears. Point being, this guy is level 14 instead of 12, so we're rocking 3,600 hit points, has really good traits uh, on top of it. We're having almost a thousand constitution, I mean, just let that sink in for, uh, for a second. That is huge. And we got the color that makes him uh, invulnerable, so immortal, uh, even if he falls. Essentially, the color will be destroyed and not the bear. Um, I have two bears because I have decided we're going to tank with two bears and uh, that creeper might be able to ch uh, chew through one of them but he won't be able to chew through both of them. So the idea is really if we fight something that is imbalanced we're bringing more imbalance uh, to that. Uh, in order to uh, use today's time most efficiently challenge our champion and I... some of our best fighters to give them an unforgettable show that's cool window thanks for letting us know so in order to use uh, the time efficiently today uh, we are going to do an arena where we uh, get the reward of faithless faithless seems to be an axe could be a two-handed axe for all i know and hopefully that will help us um, going forward we're taking our typical team uh, into that which uh, are the four that you would expect. I also stocked up uh, on raw materials here as well as medicine. So we actually should be fine. Uh, let's see what the, the arena brings and uh, hopefully that new weapon will also help us. Um, enemies here are solid level 14, wow. Okay, so the enemies do have Invigorating Vapors at the start of the turn, this unit gets invigorated. Okay, increases damage to non-engaged units by 100%. I see. Uh, combined with Control Whirlwind, that is a pretty nasty combination. Got a Marksman over here. And got a two-handed final blow a duelist over there. Okay. Well, that's going to be a rough arena. I think we could push this guy over and then use JP to, uh, to gather all three of them. That might be the way to go. Yeah, let's let's do that. So moving up here. Uh, 
pushing him a bit further. And then another crit uh, really gets him uh, low. I like the stimulating vapors. Uh, that's a good one. And we're done. Cool. All right. Fragility. That's a nasty one. And we hit, uh, we directly hit health. Uh, I think what we can do is bind this guy here. Fortifying oil, fragility, damage taken, increased. Okay, cool. Well, that's not a problem. For starters, engage. Destabilize, which means the guard is gone. Disengage. Uh, and I think we're going to use the rest onto this guy here. Weakening. Disengage. Engage. And yeah, we're going with protection just in case. And I think that's it. Not the perfect uh, round, but we're going to take very little damage. So now it's JP Pauly's turn and it's a matter of can we get these guys well together? We cannot, but we can at least get two of them. Good. <clears throat> that deals with the back line. Poly moves over here. No guard means a lot of damage. And we're okay. I tell you what, we're going to focus on the one that deals more damage. Nice. Very nice. Move over, heal some hit points. Good, we're getting some more temporary hit points, that's fine. And I think that, look, that's really it for now. Very much removal <coughs> of the armor. Hit. <coughs> Another hit. Okay, cool. Fulfilling a requirement or as long as enemies uh, are engaged, they have fragility. I think we're taking the fragility. Flasks are thrown at the player's units at the end of each round, preventing them from moving during next round. Okay, well, fair enough. I think that's a great setup here. Only Nemri has taken damage, the rest was okay. Alright, ready for round number two. Level 14 enemies are definitely a challenge. Highest level enemies, uh, and this time we're getting thrown at with vials. Um, I would want to keep our tank over here. I think Dilly to shoot uh, that person over here was the right call. 
and we need uh, JP Poly over here. So same order of things really. That's one. And that's two. Building up the rage and also standing way away from the others. A little bit of engagement. And same ordeal as the last time. We're going to remove guard. We're going to move over here. Fragility first. Disengage. Nice little hit, by the way. Hit. And yeah, we're taking protection just in case. End of turn. Good time. To move to here. Get both of them a bit closer. Plus fragility. And that is three hits right off the bat. One, two, three. Nice little extra hit with additional with additional bleed damage. And I think for full um, support, let's get the best friend bonus here. A little bit of extra healing. Starting here, starting with some additional healing. More damage. Oh yeah, this is going great. Good, moves up. Weakening. Moves to here, more damage, and I think this might even close the case, yep. No second round, first round, uh, immediate kill onto all of them. Increased critical damage from critical hits, I like that. And we're taking Vela points. I think we're okay. Might as well just fight that. Same setup. Yep, yep, yep. All right, by now we are very accustomed to how things are going here. And crits are flying in. Wow, that's a massive amount of damage. Like it. This time we might even be able to score a triplet here. Moves up. Sucks all of them together. One, two, three, four. That's two of them out. And one of them absolutely damaged. We'll take 121 on top. Unfortunately, we're also taking some damage. 
Does he have an oil on his weapon? Something is dealing straight straight hit point damage. At the end of the turn deals 45 hit point damage to the closest target. Okay. Hat bash. Mm -hmm. Got you. Good. Brutality. Well, so far we have been unlucky with all of our hits here. Okay, we have been very unlucky. Three out of three were missed. Orderly. And we're just offering ourselves as a target. Easy. Okay, cool. Moves up. Okay, almost done with uh, breaking his armor, his guard rather. Ah, uh, not yet. Yeah, we almost got there, but almost is not winning you anything. Companions have to move. Well, that's okay. Guess what? We're continuing to kill him. Almost got them in one round. Every time a companion ends their turn without dealing damage, inspiration. Every time companions lands a critical hit, we're taking bleeding. That's exactly what we want. Heal this unit, um, use a couple of raw materials to heal the armor, and final fight it is. Here we go. Okay, for starters, it's a one-hand weapon, don't like it, but maybe it is an offhand uh, weapon actually, but that I would like a lot. Deals damage, uh, ignores guard um, in stimulating vapors and knocks back uh, for two meters. Invigorating vapors at the start of their turn, this unit gains invigorated. Okay, and where are those vapors? Like everywhere? Is he affected by it? Maybe. Let's try our true and tried um, tank and spank method. Handing over invigorated. Weakening him. Hitting another time. And I think we're just going to get protection. I want to keep him engaged. Not that he can do anything. Uh, well, he could disengage, I suppose. All right, Lone Wolf. I think we're pushing this guy far off. Yep. Thankfully, we have the pushes back twice as far set up. Good, we want apply bleeding. 500 crit. All right, that's what I'm talking about. More fragility, one hit, although it costs us a lot. It's 
sprinting to here, best friends will uh, keep uh, Namri protected. And also she can't be pushed back as far. There's the damage I'm talking about. Oh yeah, there is the damage I'm talking about. Five hundred. He will take another five hundred. Oh yeah, we're we're golden. Yeah, this is going very well. Good. I think he's dead. <laughs> we got him down in one round. Sweet, sweet what revenge. Show. What an amazing victory. Have you ever considered entering the Gosenberg Arena Clash? Ah, but I digress. What did we get? Often critical damage, critical hit, and X throwing skill. How's that comparing? Oh, I think that's a straight uh, upgrade. After using a skill, if uh, um, a skill, this unit, even if engaged, 27 to father this enemy, it's the same. 27. Yeah, it's the exact same, but more, more damage overall. And more critical uh, critical hit we're now at 80 percent crit chance oh yeah baby anders sanders is wild all right let's progress a little bit further and see what else we can do in this episode all right we are back after winning the arena i just moved around a lot explored and next target will be uh, the actual quest here, uh, but uh, we just so happened to run into a dead scholar and that gives me a sign of potentially the ghost pack being around here. Having the option to uh, raid them one more time would be absolutely great. <clears throat> Maybe it's another quest, who knows. But I think we will find that out on the next morning. For now, it's sleepy, sleepy time. A little bit of that, and a lot of that, and some more of that. Let's go. Cool. Jim made it to level 12. Appreciate that. And on level 12, he can either <coughs> deal 78 damage to the target and applies Condemn. <coughs> when the target is killed, grants 5 Valor points. That's actually quite a good skill. Hmm. Or <coughs> we're giving him another specialization. That's great for Valor management. If we were to give him another specialization, that could be deflection, that could be destabilization on ranged attacks. I think destabilization works well together with piercing throw. It could be uh, fervent support, but that's a bit contradictory with our tanks. Dodge isn't bad. Whenever this unit kills an enemy engaged in combat with an ally, this unit and their ally <coughs> gain dodge, which is helpful, but I think I would like to get another way of uh, regaining valor. These uh, bravery actions can only be taken one per turn, but I think that I like Condemn. Uh, matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that I like it a lot. 
<coughs> it's a great ability. And we got Ender Sanders at level 12 now um, as well. In his case, I took another class specialization and we were running now with Deadly Contact on top, uh, Contract on top, uh, which is just creating vulnerability, so that's good. I like the decisive maneuver, uh, but it forced me to play in a certain way. It's essentially if I move with him in uh, as the very first in the turn, he gets an additional turn. Sounds great on paper, in reality potentially not as great. <clears throat> so I figured we will uh, we will go with that uh, vulnerability, which is continuously on. Two targets vulnerable is a great option. So we're up to two <clears throat> um, of our heroes being level 12. And in Jim's case, I think what we can do is shortly also this region is extreme. upgrade the spear. This region is extremely dangerous. I hope you should use well every time. single if opportunity. Not, I can help. This, by the way, now 100 to 135 is super good damage. And we don't want to run into the bandits. At the same time, I need to find a way of exploring where this trail is leading us. Currently the bandits are slightly in the way. Okay, trail is still going strong. Yeah, and that's where the pack is at. I forgot to put our our immune to terror on so this is going to suck a bit we're not immune to terror but yeah that's where the ghost pack appears to be hmm strange <clears throat> they are despawning just when we're arriving I trust you in my humble ways my good sirs that's very strange. I'll mark the slot for for future visits. Maybe I'll visit them off screen. <clears throat> or alternatively, what we can do, we can just camp here. Hope that the pack comes back. A bit of that and that and that and I think we're good <clears throat> yeah we're not going to renegotiate with them let me just shortly kill them and hopefully the pack is back afterward all right the ghost pack didn't show up so <clears throat> we're back to following the purple quests And in here in particular, question Inquisitor Clelia about the new Ethel Innkeeper. Okay, we're going to do exactly that. This is potentially her. Alright, let's question her. I'm pretty sure this is going to go well. The innkeeper? What do you want with him, mercenaries? Did those new Astral Bumpkins ask you to find him? Infidels! I knew it! They're hiding from us, trying to escape our scrutiny. But the eye is already onto them. Their reckoning draws near. It's coming! Can't argue with crazy, is what they say. Leave this cursed county mercenaries. Don't worry about the innkeeper. 
The Inquisition will deal with him and all of the other heathens in Drumback. Uh, I, I would feel bad not uh, getting her down. Not so much because I want to instigate a fight, maybe partially, but mainly also because I can't let a lunatic like her just run around. Her reasoning was uh, paper thin. And that's already a compliment for the reasoning. Oh, okay, we're fighting at three fronts. Well, but we're going to change that. And yeah, in order to have two decent fronts, it's a three way, four way. How about we're putting Jamulad over here? Seems legit, two tanks. Um, and right over here, we're having two tanks as well. A little bit more archers available. Good, we're starting right here. Everybody's orderly. Sprint up, move up, and begin to engage with our uh, usual tactic. Move in, hit, get hit, not care. Yeah. Get them down. Oh, wow, that was even a kill. Fabulous. But these guys are coming a bit closer. Alright. Let's use uh, Jim here. Moving up. Okay, well that was not so good. I was not expecting an immediate kill. Should have used that first and then the attack. But... Wow. Okay, well that is not a bad uh, skill whatsoever. I like it. He is essentially dealing 200 points of damage, and once we kill him, that's 5 points of Valor. Good, we're moving over here. Let's just quickly get rid of both of these guys. Killing the DPS before they can do anything always has been a great strategy in tactic games. And this game here is by no means an exception. Weakening the guy, and I think we're good. Yeah, we're dealing a lot of damage. Holy. <laughs> yeah, you're not messing around with Jim, that's for sure. Okay, short clean up on the side of the house triple hit into execution into execution into double hit and uh, then for good measure let's do a little sprint Tell you what, we can even kill him. Why wouldn't we? There we go. That's the five Vela points that are on top of it, and we haven't even used Gelb uh, We haven't even used our shout.
Billy G with his ultra crit uh, range easily kills this guy. Moving back, standing behind our friends. Alright, that is sending a message. Our crit range becomes insane. Crit is overpowered in this game. No, uh, there's no other way of um, saying it. It's just crazy. Not only does it improve your crit chance, but also the crit damage, which I think is where the real kicker is coming in. And it scales ultra good. Barely out of range, and pun intended in that case. Of course, reinforcements are coming at the right moment. Shouldn't have finished my turn there. Could have hit two more times and killed the fanatic. and eight points of damage without galvanization that is insane good weaken him i think we should be fine maybe even be able to kill him yeah like i said crazy damage from the bears Same deal here. This guy is completely surrounded. Okay, well that's uh, also a way of making the Inquisitor speak. Unfortunately the drops are very mediocre, I was hoping for a few better items. All right. The innkeeper made for the mountain straight to Valiant Tower. With no furs or cloak, he probably died on the way there. May you share his fate, heathens! How can someone be so stubborn and still have such a running such a mouth when we just surf them very very well? Unbelievable. Alright, so let's wine and dine here. JP Pauly. K 
can get experience I like that is level 12 yet so might as well take 550 experience isn't much but it is definitely a start Might I you? checking all of the merchants for rare items more precisely we're actually looking for quite a few items only rare plus plus items and level 12 and above so it's not that much that we're interested in in the end game at the moment uh, the crafted gear is already relatively good to up uh, to further upgrade it you ne need to really stretch yourself thin it's not that easy to get substantial upgrades to that nice a rim steel mine that in itself is good mine to your heart's content this place belongs to our owner not okay they are cool with us least i'm glad it happened before the inquisition arrived If this is a pure rim steel mine, that is great. No, it's also iron ore. Okay. So, it's just a normal mine. We could, we can get rim steel from any mine. It's just called rim steel mine. Okay, so this one here is interesting. That's uh, the mountain that they were warning us about. I think they really wanted to warn us about the temple. Python here, Python here, and I think we need new Pythons. At the beginning I was skeptical, wasn't sure if uh, they would be super helpful, but I must say they have actually proven to be incredibly helpful, very valuable items. for the new Asthel innkeeper. Oh yes, we do. How do I know you're not working for the Inquisition? That you won't burn the man the minute you get your hands on him? Huh. Good question. I feel it would be good for diplomacy, but threaten to fetch the Inquisition immediately isn't necessarily a very diplomatic move, but we'll Zealous still like try you to do that. Sick. The poor sod must be dead by now anyway. Have fun burning his dead body. We saw him head toward the peak in the middle of a snowstorm, without fire or any gear. The cold probably did him in. Interesting location here. Way for the guarding. The ice reckonings. Yeah, I wonder what they're guarding here. This must be the most remote tower ever. Valiant Tower. But what are they valiant for? Or vigilant, rather. I think there are a couple of bears and a couple of uh, wolves. I would even argue whether or not they find enough uh, food in these harsh lands. I don't see a lot of smaller animals maybe a snow rabbit here and there but uh, the game doesn't have uh, them of 
Gosh, these mountains are confusing. Gotta use a lot of climbing gear for sure. Good, we're definitely resting here yet again. And as I would have thought, we're in the need of more food. Did you beat Lisbeth in the arena? Did the audience cheer for you? Enough to forget about me? Oh! Blessed be that Ooh, eye. we can Nothing learn a new specialization, Brawler. As a token. Fantastic, which I think is your spec, right? Thunderous blow in heavy armor. Mm -mm. What is thunderous blow? That's not a bad thing. I like weakening blow as well. Uh, but Thunderous Blow seems fun. Potentially not a one-hand spec, it's more two-hand bruiser type of spec. Good. Question of the day is, what will we find back here? At the moment, it appears not much. Good, we want to go there. Which sort of is in that direction. Yeah, exploration always was one of my favorite parts of this game. Specifically since they have done a really nice job in giving you enough as incentive to explore. Not necessarily in the end game because now I do have so many knowledge points left over. And you really don't get much from it. But yeah, those little treasures here and there and uh, these little... These little chests, sometimes even greater rewards. I think that's a nice way of... Uh, satisfying kind of the explorer mentality. Currently can't put anything up here. There we go. Okay, I try to leave a uh, python here and there just to make sure uh, that I can revisit those places without needing to find the exact right location where I'm, I was coming from. I think this is where I got uh, the current Robies from. These uh, polar bears are level 14. I think that's, relatively speaking, the highest level in the game. What exactly is uh, that? Frost Wrath? Okay, we need to camp soon. Maybe these guys are going to ambush us. Who knows? If we're being ambushed, it's definitely that pack. Nice, Silly G got a new level up. And I've already looked at that, and I think we're going to go with Suppressor Fire. Deals 41 damage and applies slowdown to all units um, in the area for one round. 30 meters area, which seems absurdly large so i want to test that uh, the i use uh, the archers mainly to be 
uh, kind of uh, the crowd controllers and crowd control support. So really appreciate uh, them not only leveling up, but I mean, they definitely are, in, in my perspective, super valuable. It's the only class uh, that I have twice. Not my favorite class, I would say, but still a very good uh, class. Snow Creepers. Uh, I think I want to fight them. I want to check out what Snow Creepers are. And that could also be a good end for today's, uh, for today's uh, session. These guys are level 14, 500 hit points. Slow down at the end of their turn. This unit uh, deals damage to the health of all adjacent uh, unit equal to 15% of the maximum health. That's so not bad. Those guys are actually quite potent. I like what I'm seeing. I very much like what I'm seeing. make all of uh, you orderly charge up here <laughs> only problem is they're not wearing armor Maybe they are not as potent as I thought they would be. They are quote unquote, they can't wear armor, so it's only five hundred hit points, which at this point. Still getting used to the numbers. At this point, 500 really isn't that much, right? I guess they can become strong if uh, a lot of them just end their turn next to you. That could be uh, be a problem. And for lower level heroes, they are definitely uh, very, very strong. Because that means uh, lower level heroes have no chance to mitigate uh, the damage via armor oh quite a few snow devils and we're even looking for reinforcements Good hit. Nice little kill. And we're moving back. Do 
Sure, if double check uh, the uh, suppressor fire. That was a mistake for not using it. Hmm. Okay, that was unfortunately not a reset. Okay, I think we're okay here. Ah, we're, oh, we have even reset. Cool. Never mind. Very good. Yeah, snow creepers. Not as risky as I thought. Snow bears, on the other hand, Mwah. A plus. Super good. Okay, we're going to wait for them to come a bit closer. Plus reinforcements are going to show up and you never know where they do. See, in this case, good that we have waited here. That's long range. Got those three here. Are very much just um, taken out great turn yeah that's a strong ability very strong two down And he's just not stopping. Enders kills the entire flank. That guy is bleeding heavily and is slowed down for the next three rounds. But not even that is enough. Bearzilla moves in and kills. All right, so. Move up. Pull closer and this should be their end. Good. Lesson for us today, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the snow dwellers are not really a challenge. Cool new enemies. I um, appreciate uh, the effort in putting them in. Next time we're going to finish that and that and hopefully go for the uh, temple. Um, and then we do have an end boss here and we're kind of nearing the end of the run as well. So there isn't that much left over. 
a bit of optional content afterwards. Goons folder, a level 11 armor. So we're at least having some good armor here. Problem that I'm seeing with that is, is it really better than our other armor? So, medium armor, uh, 226, guard 20 something. And then it has 15% critical damage, but not critical hit. Hmm. Yeah, our, our armor is better. Almost all of, uh, in almost all of the categories, so yeah. Anyways, uh, that brings us to the end of today's episode. If uh, you have a good armor, try to don it uh, on the like button and uh, see if it sticks. Take care, bye-bye, and see you soon.